Right guys, this is the Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i Pro Packs. Great little star tracker. I've been using it for a couple of years. I'm gonna talk you through it, gonna put it all together. Um, it is a bit of a learning curve associated with this thing, so I'm also gonna tell you about some things to watch out for along the way. So let's get going. So firstly, it comes in this box, and I've kept it in this box all the time, and that's because um, it's got this molded foam inside, which keeps it all together. Of course, some of the parts are a little bit delicate, so I find, find this box is a really handy thing. I'm actually gonna grab my tripod and start setting up. Notice I've removed the ball head. So the first thing you need to do is get the <clears throat> this component. This is the equatorial wedge, okay? Right, what's really important about this is it needs to be set to your, your latitude of where you're shooting from. Yeah, we loosen the lever here and then just spin the cog. So I'm at 50 degrees latitude. Let's chuck this so it's got standard half inch thread, quarter inch thread, apologies. Right, the next component you're gonna want is actually the tracker itself. Okay, and that needs to be put together with this shoe. We've got the little bit that fits in the groove there. Notice there's this cap here for the polar scope. So once you uh, want to use it, make sure you take that off. Otherwise you're going to sort of wonder why you can't see anything. So it's got four AA batteries. Okay. But you can also power it if you get this rather, I don't even know what the, this lead is called, but you can find them. Um, you can power it from external, like a battery, you know, a battery pack or a power bank. The batteries do last quite a long time. So that's good news. And we can see our various, um, various modes that we can use. Um, so we've got basic star tracking, sidereal tracking. Um, you can track the sun, you can track the moon, and it's got various other options for sort of time lapses and all sorts of stuff like that, which is really, really cool. So you can do a sort of slow tracking time lapse and all sorts of things. Now you've got two ways of mounting your camera and lens depending on the size. For a smaller rig, for example, this one here, it's not too big, it's not too heavy. So we can use option A for mounting it so you take this attachment here attach your ball head and that's just gonna slot in there just check that the hole lines up and now we can simply attach the camera and like that we can now use our ball head just as we would normally and we can sort of get our composition and point wherever we want to go. So that's really, really handy. Now, before you actually mount the camera, what you need to do is get this thing polar aligned. Now, polar alignment is a bit of a dark art. It does take a lot of practice. All right, so polar alignment, you line up this thing as, as close as you can facing north, okay? And you've got to make sure you're, obviously you've already set your, um, your latitude. And then you've got to look through the polar scope and using these um, azimuth knobs, you can make very, very careful adjustments so you get uh, Polaris dead in the crosshairs. Now, something else that helps this process, this thing is absolutely key. Inside this thing is what they call a, a reticle and it's got um, some you know, pre-drawn lines and a, and a crosshair where you can line up the pole star. Um, this basically illuminates that. So as you're looking through uh, in the pitch dark, you can see that much more easily. So that's um, pretty much essential, to be honest. And that is just gonna fit in there, okay? So one kind of annoying thing about the tracker is you have, you can't polar align with your camera on be really, really easy. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be better if you could. Um, so you've got to do that, make sure you're polar aligned and then put your camera on, okay? M making sure all the while you don't knock the camera out of alignment. That's really, really important. It's really, really easy to do, okay? The other thing um, that's a real annoyance, unless you're kind of living near the equator where this thing's gonna be close to horizontal, it's really, really awkward. You kind of got to grovel and get down on the floor. So what I'd highly recommend is getting an accessory right-angled eyepiece. It makes polar alignment so much more easy, so much more comfortable. And it is a real shame it just doesn't come as standard because it is so awkward you're literally having to grovel down in the dirt to polar line every time so highly recommend getting an extra 90 degree eyepiece just to make that a little bit easier 
what is really cool about this, the, uh, the Wi-Fi th um, aspect, is if you find and download the Star, Con Star Adventure console. Okay, so it's a fairly um, bog standard, you know, pretty, uh, pretty simple looking app, but it's got all your um, <clears throat> modes in here. So just the most commonly used one, I would imagine for you will be astrophotography. You can set your exposures up to pretty much anything, Fo photo intervals and all the other settings you'll need, you know, the tracking rate, whether it's sidereal or whether you're, you know, moving with the sun or the moon, uh, or, you know, if you want to do any variations of that custom. So you have to connect this thing via the Wi-Fi. Tends to work pretty well. Once it's connected, the connection is pretty stable. So that's really, really handy. Fantastic that you can control it through that. And for that to work, you need to get an additional lead. Now this lead isn't gonna come supplied with the Star Tracker because it's very specific to your camera, okay? They can be quite hard to source, so just do your research. If you plug into the snap here, and then you plug that into your camera, uh, that is a necessary component to be able to control this with the app because that's obviously gonna control your camera. So yeah, all works very, very well once it's up and running, but there is a lot to learn, so good luck with that. <laughs> the final thing I'm gonna show you is if you wanna use a larger rig, then we can do that as well. Okay, so this is option two. If you've got a larger rig, you need to use the dovetail plate with the counterweight, and you can see I've got this um, mounted with now with a, tele, you know, a telephoto lens. So you could either use a large lens like this or even a small telescope. Okay, and that's going to allow you to enter into the realms of some deep space photography. So this is going to be an adequate setup to get some decent photos of, for example, the Orion Nebula, things like that. Okay, it's really crucial at this stage. We're really pushing the limits of how much weight this thing can take and your polar alignment has to be absolutely spot on. But that's all part of the fun. So it's a great star tracker. As you can see, there's loads you can do with it. Go and have fun. I highly recommend it.